let's uh let's come have a conversation guys as you can see the title these are the things i really want to talk about and it's going to be quick straight to the point i don't want to waste much time um this is very crucial very important some of these issues that i'm going to discuss but whilst you guys are coming in and by the way you know wherever you catch this live just you know make sure you uh go back at the end of the live so you can re-watch and see some of the things i talked about um and then we'll, we'll take it from there but we are doing great so um i'm gonna let you guys in and whilst you guys are coming in welcome everybody welcome by the way just uh let's make sure my sound is uh at par let me make sure see the sound system okay uh just let me know guys uh that the sound is good i definitely appreciate that and then we'll take it from there sounds like i'm getting a thumbs up which means the sound is good that's awesome uh but whilst we're doing that let me just uh you know switch to this page right here and uh let you guys listen to this uh let's listen to this together you know, let's listen to this together. What is now abundantly clear is that the 10 years of APC misrule has, and economic mismanagement has definitely created considerable suffering for the people of this country. From Kamakuya to Pujeru, from Kono to Freetown and everywhere, people are suffering under the weight of corruption and the mismanagement of the All People's Congress. I have seen it at first hand, from Falaba to Kenima and uh, from Kailan to Putloko, the people want change. The people are tired of, and, uh, of the suffering of paying for a bag of rice at 200,000 from only 60,000 in 2007. The people want democratic change to change to end their suffering. People learn and the Renaissance movement they're not safe for wearing black. That is why we in the Renaissance movement are calling on the Iranians to wear black. The black is to show that the colors that have led us have failed us. Now in Sierra Leone, black is the new red. We are not ready to accept less. Christ is a no go in the Renaissance movement. times the economy has been destroyed inflation is galloping the dollar has moved from uh, 4,300 yuns in 2013 to 7,300 yuns in 2016 inflation is something around 12.5 percent few days ago even fear which underscores the basic movement of people to engage in economic activity has moved from 3,750 loans to 6,000 loans. Why? How do they expect people to live? Edo, from 7,000. Who said now? 7,000. I mean, they say with the water, more. <laughs> uh, 
guys believe it or not that's not even what i want to talk about but that was just a video that i put together that i wanted i really wanted to share with you guys right but really really what i want to talk about is going to be um of course like i said talking about former president Kroma again across west africa you know flying the flag of sierra leone very high the last slide that i did i talked to you guys about the fact that the ayvs and all these radio stations that are actually not showing you know um some of the good work of the former president what he's doing across you know west africa and um i think that's very you know it's a it's very sad it's very pathetic that um you know ayv 98.1 slbc these radio stations are actually capturing what the former president is doing but other media houses are actually capturing what the former president is doing. So let me play this video, and then I'm going to jump into my other topic that has to do with, uh, you know, Edran Fisher, you know, being a, a, approved now as a judge in Sierra Leone. I'm going to talk about that and, again, expose the parliament so you guys can see. And I would get into the ECOWAS, what, is actually hap uh, what actually happened at ECOWAS, the recent session in ECOWAS parliament, at ECOWAS parliament. I want to talk about that too, and we are still waiting on the rebuttal of the the leader of the opposition that represented us at ECOWAS Parliament, Honorable Cherikuko, to see what he has to say, and I'll play that video. So those are the th three things I would hope to talk about real quick. It's almost 6 o'clock now. My goal is to knock those out within 30 minutes, all of these important issues. But let me show you this other video that I want to talk about. Go ahead, guys, share the live so other people can join us, and then we can break this down. Again, former President Kuruma is not being covered by SLBC, 98.1, you know, Radio Democracy, of course, 98.1, by AYV. They should be giving prime time to the former president when he's traveling, going across the universe, going across the world, flying the flag of Sierra Leone very high. Other international agencies are actually covering these stories. But, but Sierra Leone, where he was a former president, held by his people, two terms he deserved to be covered. So let's watch this video, and I'll talk about that real quick again, and you guys will see where I'm going with this. For the West African Elders Forum delegation on Sunday, which met with President, uh, uh, that's the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, as well as the party's leadership as part of the team's pre-election engagement with presidential candidates and their party. Well, the delegation led by former presidents of Sierra Leone, Ernest Bai Koroma, and former vice president of the Gambia, Fatumata Jao, uh, told journalists after the brief meeting with the PDP and its candidate that issues bordering on a level playing ground has been raised amongst others. The Elders Forum promised to take up the concerns of the PDP with the appropriate body and expressed their readiness to meet all the parties, their candidates, as well as all the stakeholders in the process. They raise certain concerns uh, they have on the process, and as we are here to look at the process in its entirety, we have noted some of uh, the concerns that have been raised. There are concerns about security, there are concerns about attacks here and there, there are concerns about not allowing a level playing field. Uh, these are concerns that we have noted and we will take up with the appropriate uh, bodies and uh, authorities to ensure that uh, we have uh, a level playing field, uh, to ensure that uh, everybody out there is protected and uh, to ensure that uh, uh, Nigerians everywhere are given an opportunity to participate in this all-important electoral process. And as we have just started our engagements, we will be meeting other political party and their leaderships, we will be meeting the elections management bodies, we will be meeting the government, the president and uh, his government uh, will be meeting the security apparatus, uh, civil society, and other stakeholders, all with the view of uh, um, engaging, noting these concerns, and ensuring that at the end of the day, uh, the process is uh, a transparent and uh, a process that is uh, above board, and whose outcome will be uh, democratic and will be a true reflection of the will of uh, all Nigerians. Former president of Sierra Leone there, Ernest Bai Karoma, of course he led that delegation of the West African Elders Forum uh, who visited the People's Democratic Party earlier on today and uh, the presidential candidate of the Labour 
Awesome, guys. You see, guys, th this is what I'm talking about. And this is what I want to share with you guys. This is what the former president is, do is doing. You know, Africans, the problem we have is, again, I always say, it is this bad heart, you know, bad mind for one another. Former President Kuruma is traveling across the world, spreading the good word, promoting democracy. But radio stations, Radio Democracy 98.1, that should have been disbanded, by the way, by former President Kuruma, because the TRC, the Tukusa Reconciliation Commission, makes it very clear that the Radio 98.1 was a clandestine radio station. Just Julius Spencer's, the Anafulas, and all of that, the amount of people that got killed. There was the 1990, you know, um, nine invasion, you know, when the, the Ekomo troops came and all that stuff after AFRC overthrew Tijan Kaba. You all know about that story. I don't want to go into that. But the fact of the matter is, I just want to share this with you because I want you guys to see exactly what some of us are talking about. Because when it comes to what is actually happening, it is a disgrace. It is a shame to see that the former president is not fully covered. It's not even covered by these radio stations, by these TV stations, 98.1, AYV, SLBC. And the, the truth is, when that time comes, we, the people of Sierra Leone, would ask fundamental questions. But that is why I want to share these things with you. And I also want to share with you how the president was actually, you know, um, uh, hailed in Nigeria for taking such a bold step to go and promote democracy. Because don't forget, there's going to be three elections in Africa next year. Nigeria, Sierra Leone, and Liberia. Three elections. So the West African Elders Forum, WAHEF, that former President Kuruma represents that is working on behalf. You know, again, like that's why I told you guys, go and follow former President Kuruma on his Twitter page, his Instagram page, and his uh, Facebook page. Again, just look for at EBK Legacy. E as in egg, B as in boy, K as in Kuruma, Legacy. L-E-G-A-C-Y. You have a better idea of what I'm talking about. Because I don't want to make this live very long. I just want to discuss these pertinent, important issues for you guys to pick up on this. Because, you know, I know the attention span of folks is too short these days with all the TikToks and all the confusion on social media, all the cost cost on social media, all the attacks. So I know people don't pay attention to stuff like this. So this is why I try to make this very sweet and straight to the point. But former President Kuruma, with everything he's doing, look at the award he was giving to. Listen to how they are hailing our president in other parts of the world, but Sierra Leone, the news agencies... The SLBC, the 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 ninety eight point ones, you know the 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 the, the, the AYVs could not cover these activities of the former president from our, our country, Sierra Leone. Listen to this, guys. Let's watch this together. Former president of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Your Excellency, the former vice president of the Republic of should I say Gambia now, instead of the Gambia, because there's no confusion between Gambia and Zambia. <laughs> Uh, Excellency Fatima to General Tambata, other members of the forum, not forgetting our own very dear friend, His Excellency Mohammed Ibn Chambers, National Commissioner Salaine, the Secretary of the Commission, other officials, the media, ladies and gentlemen. It is my honor to welcome. His Excellency President Bayer Koroma and other members of the West African Elders Forum to the Independent National Electoral Commission. Your visit is a source of encouragement to us and a clear indication of the importance of Nigeria's forthcoming elections to our sub region and beyond. We are fortunate in our sub region have respected former leaders who remain in the forefront of advocacy for good governance anchored on credible and transparent elections. The fact that we have won democratic elections and in turn handed over power democratically at the end of their chamber is worthy of emulation and commendation. That is why today your voice is respected not only in our sub-region but globally by the sheer force of personal example you set rather than any statutory authority. Many of you require no introduction. No democratic election in our sub-region is complete without the involvement of you, your excellencies, as heads of one election observation mission or another. Only four months ago, 
President Goodluck Jonathan led the ESA observation mission to the general election in Kenya. So too is His Excellency President Koroma who led the African Union election observation mission. I met both of you in Nairobi at the famous Serena Hotel when we went to listen to your preliminary statements on the conduct of the election. And in April last year, I also met President... All right, guys. So that's a long one, right? But you see, they are heaping praise on a former president. This man handed over power peacefully. After two terms of being a president in Sierra Leone, this man is being held across the world. But then in our own local, locally in Sierra Leone, in our local radio stations, local TV stations, this man, all of these travels that he's making is not being publicized. You are Sierra Leoneans. I want you guys to ask yourselves a question. What is wrong with that? But that in the African context, this is why Africa is behind the way it is. People like former President Kuruma, like myself, I know how much I went after the APC because when Kanda Yumkela came into the picture, I said we want change because I believe Kanda Yumkela has resume, somebody that worked at the United Nations for almost 30 years of his life. I say this man is going to change Sierra Leone, but today is a disappointment to all of us. This man has been quiet amidst everything that has been happening. This is the same man that keeps approving budgets every year, but has not been able to debate none of the budgets from the Auditor General, right? So former President Kuruma is traveling across the world, being hailed by what you saw here. It was even offered a plaque at the ceremony, which is what I want to share with you next. So you guys can see what I'm talking about. Right. But none of these radio stations are covering this. 98.1 AYV, you know, uh, Radio Democracy. Uh, which is 98.1, AYV and SLBC, Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation, which actually should be, you know, non-partisan, should cover everything. So guys, tell me if they're covering the former president's activities across the world, flying the flag of Sierra Leone very high. We want to know what is actually happening. Why is it at none of these stations? Because these are things we're going to open up an inquiry on. People should answer. Sierra Leone, this should stop. This should be the last time. A lot of us have seen this, and this should not continue. The leaders, of the, the, the directors of these radio stations, TV stations, would answer these questions when the time is right. Why is it that former President Kuruma, for everything he was doing, traveling across the world, was not covered in your radio, in your, your, your local TV uh, broadcasts? We want to see. So you guys, when I go find out for me if 98.1, SLBC, and, 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 and AYV, if they cover for former President Kuruma, I want to send me that video in there. I want to see them. And I want to see how to uncover them. Because this should be primetime news in Sierra Leone. But let me show you when uh, President Kuruma was even, you know, issued a, a plaque. You know, because of all of this. I want you guys to see this. Sierra Leoneans, we have to give due to whom it's due. This is former President Kuruma. I want you guys to see this for yourselves. Watch this, guys. this day when our elders came to visit us on a mission for peaceful and credible elections which we stand for. Thank you very much. Guys, that is our president, our former president, getting hailed across the world, right? So before I even switch to the next topic, for you guys that are just joining me, you did not see this video. And let me play this video of former President Koruma, you know, when he was actually going after, you know, um, these guys in... Uh, let, 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 me, let, me, let me play this video for you guys. What you guys well, see? Yes. Today and I are, and uh, so there are so many in the affiliated groups. All this country don't have for corruption. We are not 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 have for What is now abundantly clear is that the 10 years of APC misrule has, and economic mismanagement has definitely created considerable suffering for the people of this country. From Kamakuya to Pujemu, from Kono to Freetown and everywhere, people are suffering under the weight of corruption and the mismanagement of the All People's Congress. I have seen it at first hand, from Falaba to Kenima and uh, from Kailan to Podloko, the people want change. 
The people are tired of, of the suffering of paying for a bag of rice at 200,000 from only 60,000 in 2007. The people want democratic change to change to end their suffering. People men and the Renaissance movement, they not say for wearing black. That is why we in the Renaissance movement are calling on the Iranians to wear black. The black is to show that the colors that have led us have failed us. Now in Sierra Leone, black is the new red. We are not ready to accept less. Christ is a noble word in the Renaissance movement. The price of rice go come down. The petrol price, 7,600. Renaissance leader at that time, they say they have some office now. We don't know the office to do. Instead of wearing black, this country has to stop this government. This government is heartless. In recent times, the economy has been destroyed. Inflation is galloping. The dollar has moved from uh, 4,300 yuns in 2013 to 7,300 yuns in 2016. Inflation is something around 12.5%. Few days ago, even fear, which underscores the basic movement of people, to engage in economic activity has moved from 3,750 uh, loans to 6,000 loans. Why? How do they expect people to live? Edo from 7,000. Who now? 7,000. Uh, me, they with the water at 3,000. Guys, this is what we're dealing with. This is what we're dealing with. So that is why I want to share that with you again so you guys will see exactly where I'm coming from. But this is former President Kuruma for you, right? I want to touch on that issue. Now I'm moving on to my next topic of the day, right? Let us go into the Constitution and talk about the appointment of Adrian Fisher. But before I even do that, let me take you guys to this page right here. This is very important and this is very crucial. I want you guys to see this and then we'll take it from there. This is my Twitter page, by the way. So I went to the judiciary of Sierra Leone. They have a Twitter page. This is it right here. Seven nominated judges to the Superior Court of Judicature, I court, are currently before the Committee on Appointment for vetting and interviews at Committee Room Number 1 in Parliament. Right? So, again, when you look at all of these, I can click these photos. What's your particular about now where I want you guys to see is Adrian Fisher. Right? All these other judges, I don't know much about them. I really don't care. But who you're seeing right here is going to be Fisher right there. That's Fisher. And I'm, I'm talking about Fisher now. You guys know exactly where I'm going with this. But this is Adrian Fisher. This is the man that I really want to talk about right here. You guys already know that we've been saying Judge Adrian Fisher. But I've always challenged you guys. I have told you that under no circumstances, Fisher was not qualified to be a judge in Sierra Leone. I showed you those documents. I have all of those documents, right? I showed you everything that I need to show you guys. I showed you that Fisher is not qualified to be a judge in Sierra Leone. That was a sacrosanct fact. All right? I showed you the letter from, you know, uh, the GLC when Fisher applied and wanted to, uh, you know, uh, be uh, allowed to practice law in Sierra Leone. I showed you all of that stuff. You know, Fisher is not qualified to be a judge in Sierra Leone. That was a fact. All right. Now, we left all of that. And, you know, for the purposes of me going through this, I don't want to, you know, sway away from what I'm talking about. Because this goes back to everything I've been saying about Parliament. Now, so the whole time Fisher has been practicing and, 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 and is a judge in Sierra Leone, this man, the whole time, was not approved by Parliament. That is very crucial. And that is what I want to point out to you guys. And then Parliament has decided to finally go ahead and approve Fisher 
as a judge in Sierra Leone. And this is everything we keep talking about, which is why I'm going to show you these guys on my phone. Let me put this on the screen here because I want you guys to see this. I'm going to show transition here so I can show you guys my phone. And um, you guys know what I'm talking about. But this is, this is my phone right here. I want to show you guys this so you guys can see. And let me see. Uh, okay, it's better this way. And I can zoom this on the screen, right? This is the first letter. But before I even go to this letter, let me show you guys this letter right here. This letter is what I want to show you guys. Let me make this bigger on the screen here, guys. Right? I want you guys to see this. Sorry. That's not what I want to show you guys. All right. Bear with me for a second here. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about right here. All right, this is the letter from the GLC, which is what I want you guys to see. So let me put this back on the screen. All right, this is what I really want you guys to see. Sorry, um, let me put this on the screen here. Okay, let me uh, minimize my own video here. I want you guys to show. I want to show you guys this. I want to read this with you guys so you guys can see. This was one lawyer, Seri Kamal. This was during the case of Paolo Conte. When, uh, 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 you know, uh, lawyer Abdullahi Conte, who was one of the pioneers of the Constitution, the 1991 Constitution, right, intervened in the case of Paolo Conte, when he challenged Edran Fisher in the court and told him that you cannot say anything in this case because you're not qualified to practice law in Sierra Leone. So that was when, you know, Wara, lawyer Wara Seri Kamal, you know, this lady wrote this letter to the General Legal Council to find out for real if Fisher was qualified to be a judge in Sierra Leone, which is why I'm sharing this letter with you guys. I want you guys to see this before I even go deep into this conversation. Now, um, the General Legal Council Sierra Leone is the sole regulatory body and entity mandated by law to regulate the practice of law and legal practice practitioners, lawyers, barristers, solicitors in the Republic of Sierra Leone. As custodian of records and secretary of the General Legal Council, I am authorized to and can confirm the following. One, by letter dated 1st October 2015, the General Legal Council refused an application submitted by Mr. Adrian Justin Fisher for admission to practice law in Sierra Leone, pursuant to the exemption to the exemption criteria in Section 15 of the Legal Practitioners Act 2000, Act Number 15 of 2000, LPS amended. This was because Fisher had a case where he, he was uh, engaged in some bribery and some corruption and all that stuff. We'll get to that. Two. By letter dated, this was after Fisher tried in 2015 to apply for a practice law again and Sierra Leone was denied. He tried again in 2017. By letter dated 17th May 2017, the General Legal Council refused a resubmitted application by Adrian, Mr. Adrian Justin Fisher for admission to practice law in Sierra Leone. Again, pursuant to the exemption criteria of Section 15 of the Legal Practitioners Act 2000, Act Number 15 of 2000, LPA as amended. Now, we go to the third reason. The General Legal Council is in receipt of no other after that second way in 2017 when Fisher asked to be reinstated. The General Legal Council states in, in, is in receipt of no other or further applications for admissions to practice law in Sierra Leone by Mr. Adrian Fisher, nor has it granted same under exemption. This was signed by Nikki Spencer Coca, Secretary of the General Legal Council. Guys, this is what I want you guys to see. These are the things we're talking about. So Fisher is not qualified because I'm coming to Parliament and I want you to see how Parliament is aiding and abetting in the bastardization of our constitution in Sierra Leone. The leaders of the opposition, Kane Yumkela, Cheri Koko, and Emasin Lamina, and the SLPP as a whole. But if you guys notice, I don't call SLPP as much because why should I be calling SLPP when SLPP is being aided and abetted by the opposition? Of course, the SLPP, their party is in power. They are very unpatriotic set of people. Their loyalty lies to their political party, not to the state. Section 13B of the Constitution states, Every citizen shall cultivate a sense of nationalism and patriotism where loyalty should lie to the state, not to your sections, ethnic, regional, tribal, whatever it is. Somebody, a politician. That's not where your, your loyalty should lie. It should lie to the state. So why would I waste my time talking to SLPP when they are already causing these troubles and the opposition is sitting by members of parliament in the opposition, especially the APC, 
poised to become the next government in 2023, the opposition leader in parliament and every APC member of parliament that should stop the SLPP from continuing to bastardize the constitution, they're not doing anything. That is why the attention is on parliament because Madabi has not destroyed Sierra Leone by himself in this past four years. He has gotten the help and he was aided and he has been helped by the SLP, by the APC opposition, the C4C, NGC, and Nkanda Yukela and Emma Silaminas. Because these guys have continued. So let me show you guys the next document that I want to share with you guys so you guys can see what I'm talking about, right? This is the next document right here. Now, this, after we made a lot of noise on social media, I raved about this whole thing about Fisher not being qualified to practice law in Sierra Leone because I'm getting to the approval by parliament now. And this is not me even talking about the fact that Fisher has been presiding over cases even though he has not been approved and ratified by parliament. The whole time he was appointed a judge by the president, he did not go through parliamentary approval. So finally, because there is not much time and they're trying to cover up all their tracks, finally they went to go and do the, they get the approval done in parliament. And we want to let you guys know what I'm, sh what I'm sharing with you guys, Sierra Leoneans, it is the fact that section 135 of the constitution, which I'm going to show you guys and talk about that. But before I get there, I want you guys to see when Fisher wrote this letter, you know, to, you know, um, uh, uh, when the, 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 the judiciary the, the, the wrote to, um, you know, about the letter that I just shared with you to confirm that, hey, Fisher is qualified to practice law in Sierra Leone. Let's read this together. So government of Sierra Leone, the judiciary of Sierra Leone, this letter came from the judiciary of Sierra Leone, right, to the general legal counsel after the letter that I just wrote, uh, read for you guys. General Legal Counsel on Honorable Justice Edwin J. Fisher to practice law in Sierra Leone. That is the reference, right? All right, let's read this together. Freetown, Sierra Leone, 6 May 2022. The attention of the Judiciary's Communications Department has been drawn to a letter dated 31st March 2020, addressed to Waraseri Kamal, Esquire, titled Whether Mr. Edwin Jocelyn Fisher is licensed, is licensed and has been admitted to practice law in Sierra Leone. The third paragraph of the said letter states that the General Legal Council is in receipt of no other or further applications for admission to practice law in Sierra Leone by Mr. Edward Fisher, nor has it granted same under exemption. Of course, he's talking about the letter where the General Legal Council made it very clear that after 2017, when they denied Fisher the rights to practice in Sierra Leone because of his cases, his corruption cases, that he was almost disbarred for, disbarred for in Sierra Leone when he left and went to London. Now they are writing in that, in that defense. The government now, the judiciary of Sierra Leone, is writing in defense of Fisher, right? So let's follow right here, guys. Let's track. We are aware, we are aware that in December 2015, Mr. Fisher, as he then was, applied to the General Legal Council under the chairmanship of Mr. Yara Ashim Williams to practice law in Sierra Leone. And the application was refused by, uh, was refused. Mr. Fisher then challenged the decision in the court and in a very detailed ruling dated 28th, November of, uh, uh, 28th day of November 2016, Supreme Court Judge Justice Adeliza, uh, Adeliza Showers Sitting at the High Court, judge ruled the General Legal Council had abused its power in considering Fisher's application and carried out several procedural irregularities, which amounted to abuse of power, which the court cannot overlook. An order of satirary was therefore granted, squashing the decision of the GLC and that they should reconsider the application again and proceed in accordance with the findings of the court. The GLC was ordered to pay cost of action in the sum of 10 million loans, blah, 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 to, solicitor, to solicitors for Mr. Adrian Fisher. Mr. Fisher again wrote to the GLC under the chairmanship of Ms. Glenna Thompson, now Justice Glenna Thompson, drawing attention to the court's ruling. The GLC refused Mr. Fisher's application to practice law, notwithstanding the court's ruling. A further instituted another action in the high court against the new decision in 2017. By the time the, the action came up for hearing, he had been employed by the government of Sierra Leone. And this is why I'm going to go now to show you guys how some folks within the APC actually are the problems in Sierra Leone today. Because I want to show you guys exactly what happened when it came to that particular decision and how the same APC government, when they knew that this man, Fisher, was already disqualified from practicing law in Sierra Leone, how brother JFK actually was the one who gave Fisher an opportunity to practice law again in Sierra Leone. And that is what I want to share with you guys. And I want you guys to actually see this, right? And this is very crucial and this is very important. 
And I want you guys to see this. So let me spin my phone around here because I want you guys to see this stuff right here. All right. So this is what I really want to share with you guys. Um, when I inquired about what was happening. However, it was when JFK was the attorney general that he, that he re-employed as a consultant like in law officer's department. So JFK of APC, when he was attorney general, was the man who re-employed, re-employed Fisher. After, after the GLC, and I want you guys to understand that the GLC is actually the only authorized body to approve. So we have to ask our brother JFK these fundamental questions. Why did he contravene what the GLC actually ruled? And again, this is what the GLC said, right? And I want you guys to see this. This is what came from the GLC. I want you guys to see this. Let me spin this again. Because again, I want you guys to see and, 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 and understand exactly you know, what I'm talking about. This is where the GLC comes in. Based on the letter I showed you, where the GLC made it very clear that the General Legal Council is the only regulatory body, right? The only regulatory body, an entity mandated by law to regulate the practice of law and legal practitioners. This is what was made clear by the GLC. So the concern that some of us have is to ask our brother, you know, Fisher, uh, 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 brother JFK, the former attorney general of the APC, why was it okay for him to employ Fisher when the GLC, that is the only legal entity authorized to make sure that they provide, you know, um, uh, uh, practicing license to anyone to practice law in Sierra Leone, made it very clear that Fisher was not qualified. Giving the statutes in the, the, the uh, uh, Legal Practitioners Act of 2000, which makes it very clear that Fisher was caught in some corruption scandals. Therefore, he was disbarred from practicing law in Sierra Leone. So now, guys, this is what I want to do for you guys. I'm going to take you guys to the Constitution. But again, Adrian Fisher, right? We are breaking down these things because I want you guys to understand where I'm going. I'm going to take you guys now to the Constitution, Section 135 of the Constitution. Before I even talk about Parliament approving Fisher, after Fisher is the same judge that disqualified and dissolved the executive of APC. But then the leader of the opposition would sum up the courage to go in today, you know, approve Fisher to become a judge. When, for a matter of fact, he had failed. Because when you look at Section 135, let me put this on a bigger screen. I want you guys to see this, guys. Let's break these things down. Guys, Sierra Leoneans, we have to wake up. We have to wake up. Enough is enough. They don't fool me for two months, too long. We've been fooled. We've been abused and used, Sierra Leoneans. We cannot let these things happen again. Section 135. Before I even get to 130, 135, subsection 4, let me read section Subsection 2. This is what subsection 2 says. All right. The other judges of the superior court or judicature shall be appointed by the president by warrant under his hand, acting on the advice of the Judicial and Legal Service Commission and subject to the approval of parliament. What does that say? That's broken. That's plain English. There is nothing complicated about that. But Fisher has been a judge all these years for over a year. Remember, guys, he was a prosecutor. He prosecuted, uh, you know, Paolo Conte about Judge Williams. Even our brother, Comrade Conte, he was not the prosecutor, but he interfered in that case as well. But what actually caused the SLPP and President Bio to actually sack the Minister of Justice at the time, Priscilla Schwartz, and that of Fisher was because, of course, Paolo Conte, when uh, uh, lawyer Abdullah Conte, who is a renowned, you all know Abdullah Conte now, is a, you know, elderly statesman. He was one of the people that wrote the 1991 constitution. This constitution I'm reading to you guys. Abdullah Conte wrote this constitution. So what happened? We saw when, you know, the, 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 the APC people in parliament, you know, they've seen Honorable Sherry Cook of the APC, he sat by when Fisher dissolved the executive. When it was not even legal to practice as a judge because they had not gotten parliamentary approval. After the president appoints a judge, they have to be approved by parliament before they can start sitting on cases. And even in cases where they start to see, let's say, you know, there's an emergency and they call them in to fill in a blank. 
they should not practice law for more than 30 days, uh, 30 months, 90 days, basically. For not more than three months, 90 days, my, my bad. Three months, 90 days. They should stop. But Parliament, Honorable Sherry Koko, they sat by the APC's executive was dissolved. And that is why I keep telling you guys that there is no court in Sierra Leone. There is no judge, but of a woman that will dissolve the executive of, of SLPP. We saw when SLPP had their upheaval, Kande Yunkela, right? You guys all saw Kande Yunkela. When Kande Yunkela was being abused at the SLPP's party office, when they were fighting for flag bearer. We saw all of these things, Kande Yunkela getting kicked around at the SLPP party office. They, they were disobeying the PPRC rules and all of that stuff. No judge decided to dissolve the executive of the SLPP, but Judge Fisher single-handedly, single unilaterally, without getting parliamentary approval, but Honorable Sherry Koko decided to approve Fisher. So this is what it is. How can you approve? How can you go back now retrospectively, approve this man when he has been practicing as a judge for a year, almost over a year now? without getting parliamentary approval. But not only that, for the leader of the opposition of the APC, if this man is really aggrieved, is if he is pissed off, and this is why I'm going to go to the ECOWAS case, the next, the next uh, segment of my life, right? It's going to the ECOWAS matter. But I want to show you guys how dishonest these politicians are, how dishonest the opposition is, because I want this guy to tell me, I want Honorable Cherry Koko to tell me how the judge that single-handedly said the executive of APC was illegal, dissolved the executive. Well, I can go back to PPRC, and I want PPRC to show me how was the executive of the APC illegal. When this executive where was there all you saw was people filing court cases upon court cases against the apc as a party that was why they were not able to hold conventions because of all the court cases every time they want to move a step forward former president kuruma made it clear i don't want it no more i want to go these apc people these some of these guys will come around oh president kuruma don't go don't go don't go we don't want you to go hey, chairman for life we want you to go for third time all of these people were saying all these things when former president kuruma said no i don't want to be a part of this nonsense you guys know i have all those videos too to show but i don't want to go away from this now but i want to show you guys our parliament the leader of the opposition especially cherry coco not not kind of yunkela because kind of yunkela was not affected by the apc ruling right even though it's unconstitutional and kind of yunkela should have said something about that because it's wrong for the court to dissolve the executive of a, of a political party when pprc at the time was the political party registration commission they were tasked with the responsibility to regulate political parties right but they did not say the executive of the apc was illegal PPRC, they should show us the documents where PPRC said the executive of the APC was illegal. There is none. It is not available. And that is why I say this case will be tested someday where we will come and find out and ask, how was the executive of APC illegal when these people were duly elected by the people of the APC party? But I want to show you the constitution, subsection 2. So instead of this whole time for a whole year, Fisher has been practicing in Sierra Leone as a judge when it was not approved by parliament. That is a constitutional disaster. And instead of Honorable Sherry Koko blocking this appointment, I'm going to show you guys what he did. I'm going to show you guys what he did. You know, because I want you guys to know what some of us are talking about when we speak. We don't come here to speak because we feel like speaking. No, 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 no. That, that is not why we're here. We're here to break these things down, to open up the Sierra Leoneans, so Sierra Leoneans would absolutely understand what it's like and what we're dealing with. So I want to share this with you guys because I want you guys to see this and understand where I'm going. I'm going to show you guys the statement of Cherry Coco when they were approving Fisher. That is what I want to show you guys. And I want you guys to see it for yourselves because we're not making these things up, guys. So let me connect my cell phone here again so I can show you guys. Then you guys will see exactly what I'm dealing with. Why is my cell phone is trying to connect here, guys? Let me read this part of the Constitution again whilst my phone is trying to connect. You know, sub section, let me, let me show you guys this. I want you guys to see this. Subsection 4, which is very important. Giving what the, legal, the General Legal Council said. You guys remember what I'm talking about now, right? So, for the purposes of subsection 3, a person shall be regarded as entitled to practice as counsel if he has been called, enrolled, or otherwise admitted as such and has not subsequently been disbarred or removed from the role of counsel or legal practitioners. So Fisher, because of his corruption cases, was disbarred. 
So Fisher was given a job by JFK, who was the attorney general at the time. So JFK went against the general legal counsel that is the only entity that grants these license to anyone to practice in Sierra Leone. Guys, I'm trying to, I don't want to, I'm trying to see if I can just connect my cell phone here real quick so I can show you guys exactly what I'm talking about, right? Um, my phone doesn't like when I spin it around. It, uh, it prefers this, this, this way. But I, wanna, I really want to show you what Cherry Coco said. Matter of fact, whilst um, I'm waiting on that, let me play, let me read this for you. On the, let me read this for you. And I'll try to add this on my screen as we go. The leader of the opposition, Honorable Cherino Aremba, shared the sentiments expressed by the deputy leader, by the deputy, by the deputy speaker on improving the welfare and conditions of our judges. Matter of fact, Cherry Coco is pushing to improve the welfare of judges in Sierra Leone. That is what Cherry Coco is pushing on, uh, pushing for very, very, you know, um, uh, seriously right now. But this was his statement that he made. Let me, let me me put this on the screen now, guys. This is almost, it's almost ready. It's almost ready. Let me put this on the screen. I'm going to spin it around. Ah, my phone doesn't like when I spin it around. I'm so sorry, guys. Ah, okay. I'm just going to read it. Okay. Let me just read it. So this was what the statement that Cherico Coco made at the approval of uh, uh, the seven judges, including Edran Fisher, because my focus is on Judge Edran Fisher. I know say Usa is going to plot for me. Say this way, camp salon, but you know, you know, you, there is no way. You guys will be sued for all of these actions because I want these judges, if they trust themselves and they believe themselves, I want these guys to file a lawsuit against me. If they file that lawsuit right now today, I'll be flying to Sierra Leone tomorrow morning. I want them to file these, these cases because the, all they can do is to plot against people. They use the opposition and that of the ruling government, plot against you because you're exposing these facts and find fictitious cases to bring against you and use their system, their corrupt system against you. But those days are going to be over in Sierra Leone. But this is what Honorable Cherry Coco said of the APC. This is a man who should be aggrieved for the fact that Fisher dissolved the executive of his own political party and handed over the power of the party to him. But he's not aggrieved because they're all playing the game. So that time would come when we would get to the bottom of these things. Let me read this, what Cherry Coco said at the approval of Fisher, the same judge that dissolved the executive of the APC party that Cherry Coco is represented in parliament. The leader of the opposition, Honorable Cherno Arem Ba, shared the sentiments expressed by the deputy uh, speaker on improving the welfare and conditions of our judges. He also said, okay, this is on screen here. It's too small, but when I spin my phone, then, you know, I, I lose it. But I don't want to lose this. Let me see. If you guys can track with me, it is right underneath my photo here, right? Okay. At least let me read it this, this way. I don't want to spin the phone and uh, lose uh, the screen. Leader of the opposition, Honorable Chair of Arimba, share the sentiments expressed by the Deputy Speaker on improving the welfare and conditions of our judges. Okay? He also said that without an impartial and independent judiciary, the survival of the state would be far-fetched, given the nature and enormity, uh, and enormity of their job. He, he said uh, judges should be taken care of properly. He also heaped praises on Justice Mami, whom he said was an excellent orator and endorsed all the nominees for approval, for approval by parliament. For approval by parliament. This is Honorable Cherry Coco, guys. This is Honorable Cherry Coco. So approving Fisher, first of all, this man has been a judge practicing illegally for a whole year. Now that we only have six months left to elections, they're trying to clean up the house. Cherry Coco approved Fisher to become a judge, the same judge that disbarred and dissolved, sorry, dissolved the executive, the legally constituted organ of the APC party, the same judge that dissolved the executive of the APC, the same executive that, that was not able to hold conventions because of all these law, these court cases, the, these factions all over the world that were fighting cases against, you know, the APC party. They took the APC to court. They said, we don't want selection anymore. We don't want consultation or selection. The stupidest thing I can ever think about, consultation. Who doesn't consult? 
People want to make decisions, they consult. That is why we have a failing democracy today because people don't want to consult. The SLPP doesn't want to consult with the opposition. That is the problem we have today. So guys, all of these things that are happening, we saw this. Now, Cherry Coco went ahead and approved Fisher, this judge that, has, that imprisoned Paolo Conte for nothing for over a year, gave him a skis in charge. The same if Adrian Fisher as a prosecutor at the time, with all of these bad, bad track records, going against Abbott's Judge Williams, all of these people, Darami, all of these people, this same judge prosecuted APC folks. Cherry Coco as the leader of the opposition. Guys, tell me if this is correct. Tell me I'm crazy. Tell me I'm not seeing something is wrong with this. Tell me everything is fine. That is why we say we have a compromised opposition. Compromised opposition. And you know, I want to share with you guys something. You know, recently, Silver Blyden was on an interview, was a, 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 on a platform. And I want to share that with you. In as much as, you know, you can say what you want to say about Silver Blyden, right? But she was on this platform and she said something. And I really want to share that with you. I want you guys to see this. Um, let me pull it up for you. What she said about a compromised opposition. Let me, let me, let me see if I could, uh, you know, uh, Sylvia. No, I think it's, it might be better on the screen here. Guys, give me one second. Let me find this video. Sylvia Blyden here. What she recently said at, uh, let me see if this is the video, guys. I really want to share this with you. I want you guys to see this. Beautiful. I found it. Okay. I want you guys to see this. You know, what she said about the compromised opposition. You know, certain times it's hard to put your finger to something, right? So what you do, you build your case. And that is what I'm doing. I'm just building a case. Because again, if Cherry Coco was really aggrieved with everything that Honorable, that Judge Fisher, well, I'm calling him a judge now because he has been approved by Parliament. With everything that he has done against APC folks giving, you know, charging, you know, uh, uh, Paolo Conte with treason. Guys, if everything that Fisher has done to APC people, Cherry Coco was a member of the APC, tell me, tell me something is not right for him to go back retrospectively and approve this man, to be a judge in Sierra Leone. Tell me, guys, something is not wrong. Tell me, tell me I am all alone in this one. Let me share this with you guys. Let me show this video to you guys. Let me, let me show you guys this video. Bear with me. Uh, it's a video that I archived. It hasn't uh, downloaded, but it's downloading right now. Secondly, you have a parliament which unfortunately is compromised. What do I mean by the parliament is compromised? The leadership of the parliament, including even the leadership of the opposition, is heavily compromised. Okay, so I was trying to find out exactly what happened, what transpired in the Sierra Leonean, uh, Sierra Leonean parliament. So guys, I want to share that with you. But this is why we are all concerned about the compromise in the parliament. Because when you look at Fisher, you look at Honorable Cherry Kuku of the APC as a political party. If this guy was serving the interests of the APC party, would Fisher be somebody that you would approve now when this man has been practicing as a judge unconstitutionally and he has been going against your own folks within the APC party for a whole year? Even the case of Dr. Samura Kamara is in the end of Fisher. But Honorable Cherry Coco would go ahead and, and, and approve Fisher. And this thing was kept quiet until we, until, actually, I only saw this when I looked at the Twitter page of the judiciary in Sierra Leone. That's when I saw this. I would not have even known about this. We would not have even known about this. But these are the things I want to point out to you guys. That's why I'm laying the case. Because you as Sierra Leoneans have a responsibility now to ask your leaders of the opposition, why would they approve this man as a judge after a year of practicing without parliamentary approval? And specifically, Honorable Cherry Coco, I want you guys to ask him, why would Honorable Cherno Majuba of the APC cover 
for this kind of nonsense that is actually happening right now? Why would he cover this nonsense? Why would Honorable Cherry Koko approve Fisher, the same judge that dissolved the executive of the APC as a political party? That is the fundamental question, and I think we deserve answers in a democracy, right? You guys will all agree with that. Now, let me switch to parliament. I want you guys to listen to this, to the ECOWAS parliament. And I want you guys to know that even though Honorable Cherry Koko of, the, of, of, of you know, uh, uh, Sierra Leone left to attend this session at ECOWAS, first of all, he did not notify us. There is no letter to the effect from his letterhead stating that he's going to travel. And I'm about to play this video for you guys. Guys, it's almost 7 o'clock. Matter of fact, maybe this ECOWAS live, I'll continue with it tomorrow because I'm still waiting to hear the rebuttal of Cherry Coco. But I'm going to play this video. You guys have all seen it. I'm going to play it. I'm going to speak a little bit on it and then I'll get back to you guys on this matter. Because I want to hear what Honorable Cherry Coco has to say about this at the ECOWAS Parliament. This guy left to attend this ECOWAS session at a time when they were trying to table the proportional representation in Sierra Leone's Parliament. And I'm sure he knew about it. But before he left, this man would not even let us know that at least, hey, Sierra Leoneans, listen, I'm about to leave for a very important session at the ECOWAS Parliament because we're going to be discussing everything Sierra Leone. However, the government of President Bill is ready. They are going to table the PR, the proportional representation, in parliament in my absence. I will not be able to attend this one because, of course, I want to be at the session at the, at the uh, ECOWAS parliament. So, therefore, my members of parliament are going to oversee this issue in Sierra Leone whilst I leave to attend the session at ECOWAS. That is how a proper a communicator, a leader, a good leader speaks to the people. You know why? First of all, he is not doing us a favor to let us know when he's traveling. Whenever any government official is leaving that country to travel outside of Sierra Leone in an official capacity, they are actually being funded by taxpayers' money. Therefore, they should and they must and they shall inform the people of Sierra Leone that they are leaving the country, they are traveling. So Cherry Coco should not be traveling in secrecy because, again, this guy does not even want us to know. I believe these videos are only being leaked out now by SLPP because they want to make, you know, uh, uh, some of these videos, not this one particularly, because they want to, you know, let us see that City Tunis was defending them. So maybe these videos got leaked. But where is the rebuttal of Honorable Cherry Coco? Cherry Coco, when he travels, I'm sure he has a videographer. He has somebody who can record videos for him. He would have been proud to show us how he attacked the SLPP, defending the, the violations, the human rights abuses that have been going on in Sierra Leone for over the past four years. Cherry Coco was the leader of the opposition. Me, if I was if as, as honest as he should be, right? If he was honest as the true leader of the opposition, seeing how they kill people and McKinney, Parema Represent Massacre, Tom Colimba, Losar, even to the August 10th protest where they killed innocent citizens because some idiots was calling people to go and burn police stations and all that stuff. We, we, all of that stuff, if Cherry Coco was really sincere to fight for the people, when till this day if Vajani Samson was assassinated, Cherry Coco only wrote a press release, that was it. He has never mentioned anything else about that, that poor guy, right? But these are the things we're saying. So we saw the ECOWAS parliament, they are fighting for us. After years of advocacy, now they are fighting for us. We saw, you know, police going into the walls of parliament to, 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 they, they have nothing to do with the walls of parliament. Parliamentarians should not be fighting in parliament. All they should do is follow legal procedures or, you know, uh, procedures within parliament. Follow the judiciary, you know, uh, go through the judiciary to, en to, to make sure they enact some of these, uh, you know, uh, stand against this bad laws that this government wants to pass. Use Section 86.2. Sherry Coco has the power to use Section 86.2 of the Constitution to summon and ask the Speaker. And the Speaker shall, if he uses Section 86.2 of the Constitution, which gives him all of these powers. And I will show you that later on. But let me play this video of ECOWAS Parliament. Watch this. Hello. Sir Leo, the report is beautiful. But we also hear, it stated here, that there's a major dispute. You know, when this uh, honorable member from Nigeria said, the Sierra Leone report is beautiful, I asked myself, Sierra Leone report is beautiful? But thank God he backed it up to say, but I asked myself, and listen to him, listen to him, everybody listen, listen attentively, listen. Sierra Leone report is beautiful. But we also hear, it stated here, that there's a major dispute as to representation and how the election will be done. It's obvious. If you speak with one Sierra Leone delegate or two, they will tell you that the political situation they are going towards the election is unstable. Thank you. So who are those one or two that he spoke to? 
Is it possible that it's Honorable Cherry Coco? Is it possible that it's some other members in Cherry Coco's delegation? What is happening? We want to hear this from these leaders' mouth. We're not going to make no assumptions, Naya. No assumptions. We're not making no assumptions. Who are the people that he spoke to? But we would only know this when we hear what Honorable Chaino Majuba said in that parliament. That is how we would know that this is the man who spoke up against the violations and the fact that going into the elections in 2023, the decisions that these guys have been trying to take has been very, it's going to create instability for our country. The only way we go find out, say, Cherry Coco, now he talks so, now in a behind closed doors, he talked to this guy for say, huh? We're going into an election, things are unstable. We want to hear what he said publicly, not behind closed doors. Anybody can say anything behind closed doors to this man. Hey, well, well, well you know, with, with Fredo, which in the happening at the country, it's very unstable at this particular point in time. You know, we don't know, and you know, this and that, and all that nonsense. Politicians should not be speaking behind the scene, they should be front and center if they're not compromised, if they are honest. With their citizens, if they care about their country, if they are patriotic to their country, if they love their country, they want to protect future disasters, future instability. You speak up now to stop what happened in 1991 when we had a brutal rebel war because people were not speaking up about these things. That is what myself and others on social media we're going to change. You know that is why we speak up. people's power, right? We speak up about these things. You know the lioness, all of these people on social media that are positive. Our brother, African Express, right? But a positive, you know, uh, 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 this is what why we speak up to stop future disasters from happening. Look, let, let's continue to this video. There's no need for we to hide anything from each other here. If we in Nigeria discover that there, be there is no need to hide anything from each other, why should they be hiding anything from each other, guys? Very crucial. That means something is not right. So even the opposition that might be speaking to him, they're hiding these facts. Because the report is said from Sierra Leone is beautiful. But there are things that they know because the international community are advocacy. Like these lives that I'm doing, these guys are watching these lives. They are seeing these things. They saw the CNN interview after the, you know, everything that has been happening. They saw other African, you know, uh, TVs, you know, uh, YouTube channels, all of these uh, platforms. They share these things. So these guys, of course, we live in a technological world these days. Everything is in the open. Nothing is hidden. So they know because the, it looks like the reports that they took to Echo was, was very beautiful. But they said, we're not going to sit back and say, mm, this report looks beautiful. But what is happening here? That is why he said, if you speak to some of, and I'm sure he's saying, I have not spoken to any of these opposition people, but if you speak to them, they might tell you something is not right. But Cherry Koko, before they leave for the ECOWAS parliament, he knows everything that is in the reports that they're going to submit. You see, this is the problem. Where is that report? That is the other question we should ask. Honorable Cherry Koko, as a serious opposition leader, should have shared the report with us before even taking it to ECOWAS parliament because they have they prepared the report already in Sierra Leone before leaving for ECOWAS. This is a sacrosanct fact. He should share that with us. Where is that report? I want to see the report. Do you want to see the report? Everybody, let us find that report. I'm sure it's some government website somewhere. We can find that report. Let's see. Let's see what is in that report. Let's see what is in that report. But let's continue. Listen to these guys. I'm going to we'll interrupt free you. Free election. Of course, we, if we in Nigeria discover that there will be no free or fair election, of course, we say it out. Because if we say it out, and they go once it happens, it's helping us. But if we know that there's something that could create problem in the country, and then we we'll come here and sit there and say there's nothing, and something happens, we have lost two countries. So a situation where um, our police are entering parliament to, to make sure that there is a decorum in parliament means that that country political situation is not stable. After the August 10 incident, I think that statement needs to be re think and maybe restate it because we know just a few weeks ago there was a, a situation at the parliament where parliament member had to fight and like my colleague said security personnel had to come in i'm sure we don't want to consider that kind of situation as saying that security situation is stable i think there's a grave situation and this parliament must send a fight funding mission to Sierra Leone to investigate this major violation. It's not the first time, it's not the second time, it's the third time. The second issue in Sierra Leone is that less than a year to election, Sierra Leone is still trying to change the electoral law. They're still trying to change the election law to work in the favor of the ruling establishment. 
I think it's quite alarming and maybe the same. Guys, I'm going to, this live tomorrow, I'm going to continue with this live tomorrow. The, the, you know, the way this is going, I need, I, need a, I need some time, but I don't have time right now, but I need some time to clean this up. So maybe by tomorrow, I would have seen the video of Cherry Coco because I am waiting to see and hear what Honorable Chairman Majuba of the APC said at this parliamentary session. That is a video we are all waiting for. I'm waiting to hear that video. I want to hear. I want to hear what he said. I want to. I can't. I can't wait. Some. I know he said something. I know he fought for Sierra Leone. I know he stood up for the people that have lost their lives innocently. I know Honorable Cherry Coco has, you know, gone after the SLPP at this parliament because he had the opportunity to do it. Listen to City Tunis. I want you guys to listen to this. Listen to City Tunis. What happened? When they realized that, in fact, the police officers that were escorted there from one street to the other were not armed, they were all attacked and killed. In broad daylight, six police officers were killed. Where has that ever happened in this region? Six police officers who were there to protect the demonstrator, demonstrators because government felt these were peaceful demonstrators. It was only after the killing of those police officers, the security officers, and other people began to see demonstrators with guns and machetes. And we called that peaceful so guys, that is why I'm saying I'm waiting for Honorable Cherry Coco's video. Whatever I said at this session, we are waiting for that video, Honorable Cherry Coco. Supporters of Honorable Cherry Majuba, I am waiting for that video. Sierra Leoneans are waiting. We want to see what he said against City Tunis and what he said to concur with the other members of parliament from Nigeria, Liberia, and, uh, and, and, and uh, 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 this other country. I, I think it's two from Nigeria, or Liberia, and Gambia. Gambia, yes. We are waiting to see what Honorable Chairman Majuba of the APC, the opposition in Sierra Leone, said at this session. You guys have listened to what Honorable Chini said, right? So I'm waiting for Honorable Cherry Cocos. But guys, I'm going to leave this live right here. I love you guys. Take care of yourselves. I have a lot of beautiful comments. I wish I had time to share these comments with you, but I have to go. It's 7 o'clock now. But listen, guys, Sierra Leone is the only country that we have. But before we go, I'm going to leave you guys with this. But I'll start my live tomorrow. Make sure you come join me tomorrow again about the same time, you know, so I can expound and start with this uh, ECOWAS parliament and take it from there. But go ahead and share, everybody, share the live and make sure you, your friends and uh, uh, others come and enjoy this. But this is what I want to share with you guys. And I want you guys to see that former President Kuruma is actually flying the flag of Sierra Leone very high. And at the same time, I want you guys to, you know, uh, just enjoy this video that I'm going to share with you, okay? Because uh, I'm going to leave the live right here. I appreciate all of you guys. I appreciate what you do. You know, we've been fighting for so long. Let's keep the faith going. And also, tomorrow I will talk about the publication of the African Express, okay? But I'm going to leave this live right here, guys. Bye-bye, everybody. I love you guys. What is now abundantly clear is that the 10 years of APC misrule has, and economic mismanagement has definitely created considerable suffering for the people of this country. From Kamakuye to Pujehu, from Kono to Freetown and everywhere, people are suffering under the weight of corruption and the mismanagement of the All People's Congress. I have seen it at first hand, uh, from Falaba to Kenima and uh, from Kailan to Putloko, the people want change. The people are tired of, and, uh, of the suffering of paying for a bag of rice at 200,000 from only 60,000 in 2007. The people want democratic change to change to end their suffering. People learn that the Renaissance movement that is why we in the Renaissance movement are calling on the Iranians to wear black. The black is to show that the colors that have led us have failed us. 
Now in Sierra Leone, black is the new red. We are not ready to accept less. Christ is a noble word in the Renaissance movement. The price of rice will come down. The petrol price, 7,600. Renaissance leader at that time, they said they have an office now. We don't know the office is right now. He said they were black. This country has to stop this government. The government is heartless. In recent times, the economy has been destroyed. Inflation is galloping. The dollar has moved from uh, 4,300 yuns in 2013 to 7,300 yuns in 2016. Inflation is something around 12.5%. Few days ago, even fear, which underscores the basic movement of people, to engage in economic activity has moved from 3,750 uh, loans to 6,000 loans. Why? How do they expect people to live? Edo from 7,000. Who's now? 7,000. I mean, they say with the water, 13,000. With just a single text, it can bypass your phone's security and install spyware that grants complete access to your device. It can access every message you've ever sent. It can access every message you've ever received. It can access every photo, every video, every email. It can turn on your microphone. It can turn on... on the microphone even when you're not using a phone call and just record what you're doing in the room. It can turn on your camera, it can record what's on on your screen, it can access your GPS, it can monitor your location. And it can do all of this without you ever knowing. The spyware technology that makes this possible is called Pegasus. Pegasus is probably the most advanced piece of spyware ever developed. It is effectively the most invasive form of surveillance imaginable. Any idea that you had that aspects of your life could be kept private? Guys, I want you guys to see this. This is what I'm going to talk about tomorrow, okay? I'm going to talk about this tomorrow. So I'll break it down so you guys will understand exactly what I'm talking about. is meaningless uh, once that Pegasus is on your phone. Pegasus can infect both iOS and Android while remaining virtually undetectable. So one of the ways that Pegasus will attack your phone is through what's called a zero day vulnerability. This is a vulnerability that the phone's manufacturer doesn't yet know exists. 